Back a couple of weeks ago, Mike said, do you think we could call Andrea and just have her come to Idaho and sit in our office for the next two weeks and just say, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Keep going, you can do it. And I almost asked her if she would do that, but I knew she was busy, so. Anyway, Andrea is known for her mad coffee drinking skills and for keeping two kiddos alive while simultaneously creating custom works of edible art. By the way, two kiddos are here. Uh, she's been featured on Magoo Juice multiple times and was a finalist on Food Network's, Food Network's Christmas Cookie Challenge. Man, there's a lot of you that have done that. That's amazing. Where both the curly haired baker and her cookies impressed the judges. Andrea first attended her first cookie con in 2015 taught her first breakout session in 2017, and was a core instructor for CookieCon Indianapolis. She has since become a cookie instructor across the country. In the years since piping her first two pick rows, Andrea has learned to think outside the cookie cutter, to turn Andy Kate's cookies into a thriving family business. Andrea Walters has learned that the perfect cookie has just the right amount of flour, sugar, hard work, determination, and love. For Andrea, her recipe for success is having family, friends, and customers who simply love their cookie baby. Andrea Walters. Oh, 
shipping it across country just to get it done. You guys pivoted when we needed to. But by golly, I don't want to talk about the pandemic, right? I could never hear the word pandemic again, and I'd probably be very happy. So, gosh, what do I talk about? The pandemic hit right after we were in Louisville. I don't know how we got through Louisville without a shutdown, but we did. And I got home, and our city shut down like probably most of you. And you were stuck at home. You were stuck at home with kids. You were stuck at home with spouses. You were stuck at home. And that's when things started to unravel a little bit for me, right? <laughs> I found myself in my own little personal storm. Might have been a self-inflicted storm, sure. I probably did that to myself. But nonetheless, I was having some of the hardest days as a good year. I started having self-doubt. I started having self-criticism that everything I've ever done, and that nobody wants to see anything from me, right? And what's funny is it all kind of came back to this little thing called social media. Social media is like the best creation and the worst. It's a curse sometimes, right? I started going on Instagram and I would post a picture of cookies that I was so proud of and it'd get 50 likes. And then I'd go to this new cookie -er that just started and she's cranking out 1,700 likes. How many of us have been there, right? Why is my friend of a friend sharing that girl's cookies, but not mine? Why is this happening to me? What's the algorithm going to be today, right? you got to keep up with that social media. And do I really have to start doing what they call a reel every day for videos? <sighs> so I sat down one day and I started going through that Instagram. And I went all the way back, years of posts, and I came across this. It was one of my earliest cookies that I've ever done. It's got some weird shiny icing going, I don't know why. Um, I actually baked the cookies with margarine, because I didn't know better. I've got bleeding going on in my icing, and I know I have cracked piping, and I'm pretty sure those were supposed to be leprechauns. So then I start turning and I'm watching all the videos I can about experts and, and social media experts and influencers telling me what you need to do to get more followers. You need to delete those old photos, take out the trash, and do what you gotta do. So I started listening to him. Wait a minute, no. My friends, these are my early cookies. But then, these are our recent cookies. These are some of my early ones that I was so proud of. Followed up by ones that I did years later. I'm comparing for you, because that's what we do, right? We go online, we compare ourselves to everybody else, everybody else and it sucks the joy out of it for you. This time, I'm comparing my own work. I'm looking at what I used to do and what I do now. And I decided, wait a minute, don't delete those photos, my friends. Go back and look at those photos. My goodness, look how far you've come. Look at where you started, look at where you are now, and be proud of that ugly leprechaun, right? I, I know it's hard to do. And I know that we find ourselves in a storm all the time. That self-doubt, that self-criticism, the comparing each other, and it just becomes hard. But guess what? There is a life best for you. On social media, we call it block, unfollow, delete, mute. Get a personal Instagram so that when you get on and just want to go down rabbit holes, you're not actually looking at everybody else's work, right? There are these things out there to help you, and don't be afraid to use them. I know that I did this storm to myself during this pandemic, that I was creating all of this buzz in my head. So then I had to stop.
stop and ask myself a very important question. Why do I do this? Why am I working so hard for so little money? Yeah, you all are there. If we were to really charge what we should for cookies, we'd probably be charging $100 a dozen, right? Why are we staying up too late? Why are we overthinking this design? Why are we dealing with that customer that gives me the gray hair? What is your why? Why do you do cookies? Is it for extra money? I do that. It's a little bonus money, I like to say. Do you do it because you're wanting to be artistic and play with cookies? Are you doing it just because? Are you doing it because you want to be an influencer and get those likes? And there are those people, and that's okay. Then I started thinking, why do I do cookies? This is my why. It's my friends, it's my family, it's customers, it's people I have never met before. They're the ones that love my cookies. They're the ones that want to see their name on a cookie. They're the ones that call me their cookie lady. I was walking at the zoo one time and I heard out of the back, I heard, my cookie lady. And I was like, oh, that can't be me. Cookie lady. And I finally stopped and the mom was so embarrassed. You're her cookie lady. You do all of her cookies. That's my why. It's not for the money. It's not for the stress. It's not for all of that. This is my why. My friends, we find ourselves in storms all the time. The ones you create yourself. The ones that life throws at you. The ones that you have to deal with. How many of you find yourself in a storm? A storm of maybe relationship problems. You are trying to figure out how do I even get my business off the ground. You might be having health problems. You might be having issues with who knows what. You might be having health problems. You might have people in your life that are sick, big things. You might just be self-doubting yourself and freaking out about the post that you just made or the comment, is someone gonna come after me for that? Those are your storms. How many of you are going through a storm? I'm not kidding, I wanna see your hand. There are storms everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna volunteer, someone that raised their hand. Any of you, I don't care, I'm gonna point one of you. You're up. Okay, let's go on this side. I don't care what her storm is, I don't need to know. I'm not gonna talk about my big dark storms going up. You have a storm, you come right here, okay. right, right down here. Hi, how are you? Good, welcome. Whatever her storm is, welcome to the cookie community, my friends. We all have them. Not all the time, but different days, we all have them. And guess what? I got you. Welcome to the cookie community. didn't have 
individual letters all waiting for me. Not one, not two. Guys, I have a, a stack here. They're my people. These are the reason that I'm able to keep doing what I'm doing because they're there for me and I hope I'm there for them, right? Thank you guys so much.